It's no secret that turn-based JRPGs are not as popular in this era of video games, even more so without all the modern quality of life additions in today's market. But Rabbit and Bear Studios has risen in solidarity and said, why not revisit the classic PS1 era of JRPGs and recapture some of that old school pixel meets 3D aesthetic in gameplay? That is exactly what Euden Chronicle 100 Heroes is all about. Starting as an incredibly successful Kickstarter campaign in July 2020, this game has gone full-blown no shame sweet coden in practically everything besides the name. If you've experienced that series before, you'll be right at home here. At its core, the main protagonist, Noah, seeks to recruit any strange-looking character he comes across to add to his ever-evolving castle and army of randos. From Scottish-sounding miners to terrifying Sunderes, not all of these heroes wear capes. They'll help Noah generate materials, run certain vendors, grant handy support abilities, as well as fight alongside him in battle. Hence, it is worth seeking out as many potential heroes as possible. But just be patient, especially during the first half of the game, as finding these guys around the world map is a chore. Long story short, the recruitment drive usually descends into mindless zigging and zagging every corner of the globe, then completing a generic fetch quest afterwards. Yay. Even though you can team up with a sizable six party members at a time, a decent chunk of the characters are a little too similar to each other gameplay-wise. Plus, having a large ensemble cast comes with the lingering issue of managing and upgrading stacks of equipment and abilities, as well as the inherent problem of no screen time-itis. The non-essential characters might make a snarky remark or two after you meet them, but don't be sad if your favourite character starts to blend into the background. The battle system gave me a pretty similar feeling as well. While it does harken back to Sweet Coden's roots, the gameplay does go a little too far in that direction without offering anything substantial or unique. Think of the most generic turn-based JRPG out there, and this probably won't be far off. Fans of the series might still enjoy the sequential input style of combat, but I routinely found myself resorting to auto-battling the random encounters way more than I should have. The big bosses sometimes feature a gimmick like an operable crane or cover for strong attacks which greatly affect the tide of battle and planning out your actions to accommodate this can be fun, albeit I just wish there was something more succulent to savor. Is this too much to ask? Considering that Ayudan Chronicle is around 35 hours in length, it's only a matter of time till the regular bouts will have you glaring a hole into the power button. In an attempt to shake things up though, the devs implemented a few tactical grid warfare battles, but these are even less exciting than the typical turn-based affairs. It's just so visually dull and slow-paced. There isn't a lot going on here either. Units move in four directions, one space at a time, while occasionally busting out a special attack or power-up. However, this only makes it slightly more interesting. Funnily enough, I found it hilarious how often an army leader would be like, I never saw this blatantly obvious event coming. Or I can't believe you would betray me at the worst possible time ever. How dare you? Not only do these story events break the difficulty into pieces, I just couldn't help but laugh whenever they happened. It was so ridiculous at times that I could literally stand still and win simply by pressing the begin battle button. Talk about strategy, folks. Good luck finding it here. In terms of story, it's the cliche bringing the fellowship together tale that's been done a bajillion times before. While it does have a few great scenes peppered in, as well as some strong voice acting across the board, a hundred heroes story won't leave much of a mark. It also loves to make players meander around, making you walk to and fro for no apparent reason. Like marching all the way back to the inn at a town entrance for five seconds and then returning again to the opposite end of the local map to advance, sometimes twice in a row. Even when the fast travel option is unlocked halfway through, it doesn't do enough to alleviate the fluff. Time wasting at its finest. The dungeon designs are pretty pleasant, however. 
Most of them don't overstay their welcome and have cool, distinct puzzles or gimmicks to chew on. Capped off with some solid tunes, slick art design, and a finely balanced boss at the end. That being said, since you can only restore HP and MP at inns or with items and abilities, I did find myself utilizing SP skills only instead of MP ones. Since save points don't restore anything and MP items are quite rare, almost all of my team's magic was focused on keeping everyone alive, like a near constant battle of attrition. That sums up 100 heroes quite well actually. A game of great moments spread far too thin. Only fans of the original Suikoden entries will reliably enjoy this because most contemporary turn-based JRPGs have a much more exciting gameplay loop and story. While the dungeons and boss battle variety help to keep things fresh somewhat, it can't make up for the consistent meandering and dull battle systems that spoil the experience as a whole.